Hey everybody, welcome back to Power Mods. I'm Louis Skibo. We're going to do something pretty cool today. We're going to install these lights that I received from nexttechindustries.ca. Now these are really nice and high quality LED lights. They're going to blow your mind. Now Next Tech sent us four different lights. This massive 40 inch bar is going on my Land Cruiser. That's going to be a really cool install. 240 watts, 21,600 lumens. It's just a massive light. Now the good thing about this, each one of these LEDs are 10 watt Cree lights. It's a single row of lights. Now compared to a light bar the same size, most of them have a double row of 3 watt lights. So this one here is 30% brighter. But what we're putting on the RZR today is this 11 incher, two 5 inch lights. And this is all the cool stuff that comes with it. You get your wiring harness, two different mounting options, and all these fittings, they're waterproof. Let's get them on that RZR. Now the first thing we're going to do, I'm going to install these lights, get them into place exactly where I want them, and then we'll figure out where we're going to put our wiring. All right, so what I've done, I've measured where I'm going to mount this centered light. I want to make sure that it's nice and centered here itself. I've got these handy little mounts that are actually clockable, and they fit this roll bar, which is an inch and three quarters. So I've marked out where I need to put this. I'll lock these in a place. I was considering putting some black electrical tape underneath this little mount here, but I think it's going to be overkill, and this mount is a pretty good compression fit, so I'm not going to need that. I'm going to use Loctite though, because I want to make sure that these don't come off. You've got two different options for mounting these little babies here. You've got these little side brackets, or you've got these little half moon type deals that give you a lot of different variety for whatever mounting application you might have. For this application, we're going to use these. Not going to tighten that up all the way because you know what? We're going to have to aim that in a little while. Now we got to get the sides on. Oh, these are going to be nice. Now these five inch lights, they're 1800 lumens. 1800 lumens out of two LEDs. That's pretty amazing. This bigger light here in the middle is 5400 lumens. So these are putting out a lot of light. I'm going to clock it out quite a bit. Right there. Let's try it on the trail at night and see how these look. Since these lights are so powerful, they have a massive heat sink on the back. These 10 watt Cree lights. You got to watch what you buy now. There are a lot of these LED, in quotation, light bars they're selling. $100 for them, $200 but they're not really giving you what you want. You're not getting the power, you're not getting the light output that you're going to want. You know, if you want to buy something like this, there is a quite a large outlay of money, but the quality and the amount of light you're getting is just staggering. We played with these outside before we actually installed them and very impressive. Now these Kree LED lights are a 50,000 hour LED light. And this lens on here, they call it virtually unbreakable, which is pretty handy on something like this if your buddy's in front of you throwing rocks up and you're hitting trees and who knows what. You want it to be pretty tough. And this whole case is extruded aluminum, 6061 extruded, so that's pretty tough. I got my cameraman up there telling me these are all pointed more or less in the right direction. Now, I can't really set these up until we have a nice dark night. I'm going to take it out in the field and check them out. Now, this middle light here is a spot, and these two side lights are euros, so the pattern's a little wider. It should flood out the ditches and the fields pretty good. 
Right on. Let's get them wired up. I'm at the point where I've got the three lights mounted. I've got the wiring harnesses all set up. But because I kind of go off-road and I do some things, I go deep in the water, I don't want these relays and I don't want the switches to be located on the dash. I want them to be up nice and high. You know, it's pretty much every time I go out, the water's up to about here. Everything's underwater. I just don't like that. I think I want to have the switches right here. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to do a bunch of cutting and splicing. I'll solder these up, bring the relays up. I'll keep them up here, shorten up the wires for the switches. And that's the way I'm going to like it. Then all I have to do, just run back two power cables right to the battery. Bob's your uncle. Because there's going to be three relays in there and a couple of switches, it's going to be a little cramped. And I don't want all these wires and switches sticking out, so we need a place to put them. So I got this piece of two inch PVC piping, cut the back side off it, chamfered the edges. It's going to fit in there just perfectly. Okay, so we've shortened up these wires, soldered all these connections. We cut, spliced, soldered, used heat shrink on them, tightened them up really nice because you know, they're going to get wet at some point. We're going to be doing some deep water crossings with this. And we also extended our power cable. So what we're going to do first is we're going to just test them out to make sure that they work. We don't want to go through all this work, tie everything down, strap it in, and then find out that, you know, we messed up a connection. Both lights on. Looks pretty good. Okay, so there's that one. Check our other connection. Ooh, and that's a bright one. Cameraman says it's bright. Right on, let's strap these in. Yeah, that's a bit of a mess of wires, but we knew that was going to happen. That's why we took precautions. Pretty handy with the roof off. Just get in here and do this. Once that roof is on, also that'll be covered up. Right now I'm just strapping this harness into place. I'll probably come through, get a nice big piece of wire loom, serrated kind of looking thing, and I'll clean it all up. But honestly, I think when it's all said and done and tucked underneath the roof, I'll probably end up forgetting about it. So all I did was I just drilled a hole here in this floor pan. If it came underneath here, underneath the seat, it might pinch the wires. If I came down in here and left these fuse blocks in here, that fills full of water. I have to drill that out, but I don't like it in there. So I'm just coming in through this floor pan. It comes right out to the batteries. Admittedly, that was the cameraman's idea. I'll give him that. He's a good man. I'm pretty hard on him sometimes. Because this little fuse block here doesn't really seal up very well, we're going to put some dielectric silicone in there, dielectric compound, whatever you might want to call it, and we're going to pop it down inside here. This is going to get wet, there's no doubt about it, so we want to make sure that it's not going to corrode, not going to fall apart on us. Nice to keep it going through this cap here. Keep it nice and nice and tidy. Now that we've wired these up to the battery, might as well do a little test. I'll check out the normal 
Normal headlights. That's bright. Oh, look at that. Oh boy. Okay, let's wire up these switches. So I've just made this little bracket here. It fits this switch just perfectly. There's a little notch in it. Aluminum is great to work with. It's very easy. I just used a little blade. Now all I have to do is just bend this up on the vise, attach it to our little piece of PVC piping. We're good to go. Okay, this kind of looks like a bit of a dog's breakfast, but it does work. They're angled down a little bit so I can see from the seat which one I'm going to be pressing. When I get some new flat black paint, I'm just going to pop this off, spray it up. As you can see, everything's tucked in. The roof will come down over top, won't interfere with anything. Looks pretty darn good. There's going to be lots of light. Okay, hit the lights. Well, that wraps up this install of the 11 inch light, the two 5 inch lights on the side, the wiring harness, got the mounts up, looks pretty darn good. The only thing left to do is to test it. We're going to have to wait till it gets dark. I'm going to shoot another video, do some comparisons. You guys are going to have to tune in and see that. I got to thank nexttechindustries.ca for supplying a great light. I can't wait to try these out and use them. Very high quality and the brightest lights on the market. Make sure when you give them a call to buy these, you tell them Louis from Power Mod sent you. Don't forget to check us out on Facebook. Give us a big old thumbs up and keep on coming back. Thanks for watching. Nothing